Before we start, please subscribe and like the channel. Parnavaz, a young man from Tskida, was a descendant of mixed origin. His father was from Kartli, from the Mosquitoes dynasty, and his mother was a peach from Ipsa Khan. When Alexander conquered Kartli, Parnavaz's father was killed, and his mother was able to save Parnavaz by escaping to the Caucasus Mountains. Parnavaz grew up in the mountains and became a skilled hunter, but because of fear of Azon, who killed his father, he hid his virtues. One day, having met Azon, Parnavaz won his favor with his hunting skills. Parnavaz's mother, worried for his life, begged him to be careful and not show his virtues. However, the fear of Azon was so great that she invited Parnavaz to leave the country and go with her to Persia, to her brothers. Parnavaz, despite great sadness, decided to go to Ipsicon. But before leaving, he had a dream in which he found himself in seclusion, and then a ray of sunlight pulled him out to freedom and he saw the sun. Waking up, Parnavaz interpreted the dream as an omen of happiness in his future journey to Ipsicon. Parnavaz, a young and brave hunter, went hunting in the Daigomi field. Chasing a herd of deer, he entered the gorges of Tbilisi, where he managed to wound a deer. The wounded deer ran a short distance and fell at the foot of the cliff. Parnavaz decided to spend the night next to the deer, which had become the prey of his hunt. Under the rock where he stopped, a cave was discovered, long filled with stones. At that moment it began to rain heavily, and Parnavaz, in order to hide, made an entrance to the cave with the help of a butt. Inside he discovered an incredible treasure, gold, silver, and valuable jewelry. This unexpected discovery filled his heart with joy, and he remembered a prophetic dream. Parnavaz returned home, discreetly informing his mother and two sisters of his discovery. That same night they went to the cave on donkeys with various vessels and began to remove the treasure from inside. Over the course of five nights, they successfully transported all the treasures and then sealed the entrance to the cave to keep their secret. After this, Parnavaz sent his slave to Kuja with news of his wealth and invited him to join him. He expressed a desire to support Kuja and together with him resist the ruler Azon, hoping for a prosperous future and victory. When Kuji learned of Parnavaz's wealth, he enthusiastically welcomed his proposal to join forces against Azon. Kuji promised to increase Parnavaz's troops using his own fortune. Parnavaz, in response, secretly went to Kudzi and Egrisi, bringing with him part of the treasure and his relatives. Kuji recognized Parnavaz as a worthy leader and offered him dominance if they were victorious. Parnavaz and Kudzi joined forces and began negotiations with the Ossetians, Lex, and peoples who did not want to pay tribute to Azon. They agreed to join Parnavaz and Kuji, increasing their troops. Soon a large army began to flock from Egrisi, and everyone headed against Azon. A thousand Roman soldiers who suffered from Azon, and the entire Georgian people, abandoned him. Azon could not rely on them, because his actions were perceived as villainy. Azon left Mskida and took refuge in the fortified positions of Klarjeti. Parnavaz entered Mskida, capturing all four fortresses, and then conquered all of Kartli, except Klarjeti. After a successful defense against the Greeks, Parnavaz decided to turn to King Antiochus of Azurastan for support. He sent messengers with numerous gifts and promises of service in exchange for help against the Greeks. Antiochus accepted his gifts, called Parnavaz his son, and sent him a crown, ordering the Armenian rulers to support Parnavaz. In response to the threat, Azon attracted troops from Greece and attacked Parnavaz. Meanwhile, Parnavaz strengthened the Georgian army and turned to Kudzi Jurdzuk and Ossetians for help. Under the leadership of Parnavaz, the combined forces met the Greeks in battle near the site of Artani. The battle was fierce, but the Greeks were defeated. Azon was killed and his troops were defeated. After the victory, Parnavaz continued his offensive, hitting Greek territories, especially Anzianzer. He then returned to Klarjeti, taking possession of it, and headed back to Mtskida. The entire fortune of Azon also passed to him, which amounted to untold wealth. Parnavaz, in order to protect himself from possible enemies, took a number of steps. He divided the lands between Igris Skali and Rioni, giving their possession to his relatives. Parnavaz's sister married the king of Ossetia, and the other sister married Kudzi. Parnavaz transferred land between Igris Skali and Rioni to Kudzi, where he built the fortified city of Tsakigadzi. Parnavaz then asserted his dominance, becoming king over all of Kartli and Aguri. He strengthened his army from the Kartlosids and appointed eight Aristavis and one Spaspet in various areas of his kingdom. Aristavi means ruler of a region. Each Aristavi was given certain territories to rule. Parnavaz also appointed a Spaspet, who ruled over all the Aristavs and subordinates, officials appointed by him, collecting tribute and ensuring order in the kingdom. Parnavaz took a representative of the Durdzuk tribe as his wife and made significant changes to the structure of his kingdom, following the model of the Persian kingdom. He strengthened the city of Mskida, restored the destroyed cities and fortresses in Kartli, which were devastated by Alexander's troops. 
The Greeks were unable to take revenge on Parnavaz as they were busy fighting the Romans. Parnavaz created an idol and dedicated it to his name, calling it Armas. This name was used in Persian to refer to Parnavas. A statue of Armas was erected on the top of Mount Kartli, and a large festival was held annually in his honor. This place became known as Armazi. Parnavas entered into the service of King Antiochus of Azurastan, and during his long reign, 65 years, he ruled the country wisely and peacefully. He spent the spring and autumn months in Skida, the winter months in Gakiani, and the summer months in Sunda. He also visited other areas of his kingdom and took care of his subjects. Parnavas created an army of Roman horsemen who joined him and divided them into different regions. He gave them the title as Nura from the word Azon and showed concern for them for their courage in the fight against Azon. It is important to note that Parnavas made a significant contribution to the development of the Georgian language and culture. He spread the use of the language in Kartli, created the Georgian script, and left an indescribable mark on the history of his country.